Today is an exciting day on the Foreign Fork because we are making one of my favorite recipes, pistachio cookies direct from Italy. You're gonna love this recipe, I can guarantee it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to The Foreign Fork. My name's Alexandria and this is The Foreign Fork where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world. And today we are going on a trip to Italy and having one of my favorite Italian desserts that I discovered while living in Rome. They're a pistachio cookie that's made with ground up pistachios that we turn into a flour. So it's gonna be really fun and interesting and it's only five ingredients, you're gonna love it. We're gonna get started with a big mixing bowl. And the first thing that we are going to put in here is one and three quarters cup of super fine almond flour. We're also gonna add one and three quarters cup of powdered sugar. And then this is the fun part. So to make this recipe, you're gonna need pistachio flour, which you can't find in grocery stores. So we're gonna make our own pistachio flour. So what you're gonna need is one and two thirds cup of unroasted, unsalted pistachios. Sometimes these are really difficult to find in traditional grocery stores, so I normally go to a health food store, like Whole Foods or something like that, and they normally have them packaged unroasted, unsalted. And all you're gonna need to do is if you have like a little food processor or one of these little blenders, you can put the pistachios into the blender cup. Put this in here. And that is your pistachio flour. Super quick, super easy, and now it's ready to go into your cookies. Here's a little tip for you. As soon as you see the pistachios turn into powder, stop grinding it after that. If you keep grinding the pistachios after they've turned into powder and then continue the blade going after that, it'll start turning into like pistachio, like a peanut butter consistency. So we want it to be flour. So as soon as you see the powder, you can stop. All right, next you're gonna need the zest of one lemon. I recently got this lemon zester, which I love. It's a newfound favorite in my kitchen. But if you don't have a lemon zester, you can also use a really small setting on a cheese grater too. That will work as well. A tip for zesting lemons. When you're zesting your lemon, you always wanna make sure that you're only getting the very top layer, the, just the yellow part of the lemon. If you zest too far down under the surface, you start to get this white part, the rind, and that makes it um, more of a bitter, flavor than just like the delicious lemony citrus taste that comes from the top layer. And the very last thing that you're gonna need is two eggs. I know that that doesn't seem like a lot of liquid to go with all of this flour, but I promise you it works out. Have no fear, it'll be the perfect amount. Then you can just use a spoon or a spatula to mix it up. See, I told you those two teeny eggs would do the trick. So now that the dough's done, all we need to do is roll them into cookies. So you're gonna take some dough about the size of like, I don't know, I think this is the size of like a chestnut shell. So maybe something about this size, maybe like a golf ball. And roll it up a little bit. And then we're gonna have a little side dish full of powdered sugar. And you can roll this in the powdered sugar. And then the important part, these pistachio cookies are based off of the paste di mandorla, which is um, a cookie made of almond flour, pretty much is what that translates to. Um, and those cookies, whenever they're served in Roman bakeries, they have little finger indents on them. So once you take it out of the powdered sugar, kind of hold it in your palm and make some finger indents on each side. And that's how you put them on the tray. These cookies are maybe one of my favorite recipes on the blog, not only because they're delicious, which they are, they're really delicious, but mostly because of the story that's behind them and how they got to be on my blog. For a little while, I lived in Rome, and every single day, I would go for walks through Rome on all the beautiful streets there, and I would always have to pass through Campo dei Fiori, which is a really popular market that takes place in Rome. And on the other side of Campo dei Fiori, there's always this really wonderful Italian bakery. And every single time I passed by, in typical foreign fork fashion, I would stop in and get a baked good that I had never seen before. But then there were also these really small pistachio cookies that always sat on the countertop. And so whenever I bought something, I'd always have them throw a pistachio cookie in there. And I loved them and I looked forward to them every single time I walked by. So I came home 
and I was missing the pistachio cookies that I had eaten while I was abroad, and I wanted them so badly, and I could not, for the life of me, figure out what they were called. So I put on Instagram a call to all of my friends and followers that um, were following along in my journey, and I described these cookies and how they were shaped and what color they were and the flavor that they were, and I asked if anybody could figure out what they were called. People were sending me all kinds of suggestions and none of them were right, and finally, after maybe like two days of searching, somebody that was following along with my journey in India contacted their friend that was training as a pastry chef in Italy and asked them if they knew what it was called, and she did. She knew that it was called a pistachio paste di mandorla, and then I was able to look it up, figure out what the cookie looked like, figure out how it was made, and then I made up my own version to put on my blog for you all to try. There is a lot of love and time and research that went into this recipe so that you could try something that I loved so much. This recipe should make about 21 cookies, and if you've noticed, we didn't put any baking powder or baking soda into the recipe, which means that the cookies aren't gonna change shape at all. Um, they're just gonna hold exactly their sh whatever shape they are, so you can normally fit them all, 21 cookies, onto one baking sheet with no problem. They won't spread or anything. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees, so I'm gonna put this cookie sheet into the oven for about 15 minutes. They're gonna come out pretty soft, and that's exactly what we want. You want them to be kind of the texture of marzipan maybe. Um, if you want a crunchier cookie, you can bake them up to about 22 minutes and then they'll bake all the way through and get kind of crunchy, but I like them soft, so 15 minutes is my go-to. And now your pistachio cookies are all done and they're ready to eat. I almost guarantee you that everybody that tries these is gonna love them. That's a big statement, but I think I'm gonna stand by it because they are delicious. Should I have a bite of them? I think I should. Mmm, you see the middle? They're nice and chewy in there. I love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you make this recipe at home, and if you do, don't be afraid to leave a comment below telling me what you thought. If you need the full written instructions, you can always find them in the description of this video. And don't forget to check out all the other videos on my YouTube channel because I'm making desserts and dishes from every country in the world, and there's lots of fun things for you to try. Thank you again for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget to put some culture in your kitchen this week and I will see you next week. And that is your pistachio flour. Super sick, super sick, super quick. <laughs> okay. Super sick. Super sick, okay.